In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With Once again, my dear friends, welcome to this Mass of the Monday of the second week of Easter. Today I'm going to offer this Mass for your, all your intentions for all the intentions that are daily coming to us um, to, to, to join the, our hearts in prayer and supplication to God, especially, obviously, for um, the challenging moments we are living with um, coronavirus, for all those affected, for all those who help, for all those also who have asked our prayers, especially for all who are sick. And today I'd like to include in our intentions, the intentions of the Gibraltar prayer warriors who um, online are constantly um, praying with us and joining our hearts in our needs, especially for those who are sick. Let us prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have been renewed by Paschal remedies, transcending the likeness of our earthly parentage, may be transformed in the image of our heavenly Maker. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As soon as Peter and John were released, they went to the community and told them everything the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard it, they lifted up their voice to God, all together. Master, they prayed, it is you who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. You it is who sent through the Holy Spirit and speaking through our ancestor David, your servant. Why this arrogance among the nations? these futile plots among the peoples, kings on earth setting out to war, princes making an alliance against the Lord and against his anointed. This is what has come true in this very city. Herod and Pontius Pilate made an alliance with the pagan nations and the peoples of Israel against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, but only to bring about the very thing that you in your strength and your wisdom had predetermined should happen. And now, Lord, take note of the threats and help your servants to proclaim your message with all boldness by stretching out your hand to heal and to work miracles and marvels through the name of your holy servant Jesus. As they prayed, the house where they were assembled rocks. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and, become, and began to proclaim the word of God boldly. The word of the Lord. The response of the psalm is, Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Blessed, Blessed are they who put, put their trust in, in God. Why this tumult among nations, among peoples, this useless murmuring? There arise the kings of the earth. Princes plot against the Lord and his anointed. Come, let us break their fetters. Come, let us cast off their yoke. Blessed, Blessed are those who put their trust in God. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord is laughing them to scorn. Then he will speak in his anger. 
His rage will strike them with terror. It is I who have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. Blessed are those who put their trust in God. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. Ask and I shall bequeath you the nations. Put the ends of the earth in your possession. With a rod of iron you will break them, shatter them like a potter's jar. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was one of the Pharisees called Nicodemus, a leading Jew, who came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who comes from God, for no one could perform the signs that you do unless God were with him. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, unless a man is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, how can a grown man be born? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, unless a man is born through water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised when I say you must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. That is how it is with all those who are born of the spirit. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my dear friends, today we have a gospel account from um, John, which is normally suggested for um, a baptism. When we have a baptism, a little bit of this gospel is read. And I think it's a beautiful gospel because it brings us into a light that um, that makes us be filled with God's grace basically it's a baptismal gospel it talks about baptism more than anything else but before we get into that I think it's a, a, important to realize that Nicodemus who was a leading Jew a Sanhedrin part of the Sanhedrin and he came to Jesus by night now when John the gospel writer says that Nicodemus came by night I don't think he was just talking about um, night as darkness but rather talking about the darkness within um, the, the 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 spiritual experience that Nicodemus was going through he came by night Saint John of the Cross writes about the dark night of the soul how often we go through life indifferent to God and there's no worse darkness my dear friends than indifference because darkness is what obviously doesn't make us see and a little light even a minute light a little much will help us to go through the path that we have to go through in the middle of the night you see the spiritual experience of darkness is not good and Nicodemus, poor man, was searching for that light. And he comes to Jesus. And he comes to Jesus with a real desire to be able to see. A real desire to be able to understand 
a real desire to receive that grace. And Jesus tells him, unless a man is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That kingdom of God, which is not a political kingdom, which is not a monarchical kingdom, which is not an, even a territorial kingdom, the kingdom of God, my dear friends, is far greater than all that. It's an existential kingdom. In other words, it's a kingdom within us. It's a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of justice, a kingdom of service, a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of God. And so, when Jesus tells Nicodemus that a man has to be born from above, Nicodemus immediately reacts and says, how am I going to be born again? I've been born once. You kind of go back into your mother's womb and be born again. And Jesus kind of looks at him and not only are you in the dark, Nicodemus, but you are hard of heart. You're a bit difficult to convince. Don't you realize that being born again is something else? It's allowing the grace of God to fill your life. That grace of God, which is what ultimately is far greater than existence itself. It's that grace of God by which we are strengthened and consoled in difficulties. That grace of God which makes us see beyond what there is in front of us. My dear friends, the grace of God is given to us when we allow him. Yesterday we celebrated a beautiful feast, the feast of the Divine Mercy. The Divine Mercy, when it is experienced, it is, um, it is lived, makes us turn our hearts to Jesus and to trust in him. Jesus, I trust in you. And this is what the grace of God does. Help us to walk through life with a new vision. A vision which is grace. A vision which is living that kingdom of God in our midst. You know, when we say be our Father, we pray, your kingdom come. Well, what does that mean other than this? Allow the grace of God to fill our lives. Allowing that grace of God which opens our minds. Allowing our, our, the grace of God to shift us from being indifferent and careless. You know, hopefully soon, and we don't know when obviously, we're going to be going back to normal living. And the Pope, the other day in a reflection, talked about a new rising, a new resurrection. And it's true, if we miss the grace of God, when we go back to normal living, if we miss the grace that God is giving us now, we're going to miss the biggest thing. You see, it's not going back to what it was. It's going forward to what it will be. And in our moving forward, there is no better way than moving with the grace of God. And this is why this story of Nicodemus and Jesus, the dialogue that they have, is very important to us now. In many ways, we are living in darkness. We don't know what is happening. We don't know what is going to happen. Hopefully, the way things are looking, soon we will be, be um, going back to daily normal living. How? Hopefully, the great lesson 
of realizing that being able to see is far greater than just sight, it's vision, it's insight, and that is the grace that God gives us, my dear friends. And so we pray that we may realize the opportunities we get today to put our trust in Him, to allow the grace of God to fill us, to be born again, to be born anew, to be born in the life of God's grace that is poured upon us. And so, my dear friends, let us make our prayer one of confidence and one of faith. We pray for the Church of God throughout the world, for Pope Francis, for all those dedicated to the service of God's Word. May they proclaim the coming of God's kingdom among us with boldness and joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <coughs> we pray for our government and the governments of all nations. We pray that in all they deliberate, they will seek the ways of peace and justice, always searching for the good of all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all the intentions, very especially of the Gibraltar prayer warriors, and all the intentions that we bring before Almighty God in this Mass, especially for our sick, those sick commended to our prayers very especially, that God may heal and console and strengthen us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we commend ourselves to Mary, Mother of the Risen Lord and Mother of Divine Grace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands made, it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash all iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, the Lord accept the sacrifice, the, the praise and, and the glory of his name, name for our good, good and the good of all his holy church. church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with and you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Praise them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to do right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and every, at all times claim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. To him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is absent from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. 
Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we pray your death, O Lord, and come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Carmel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, to sit to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. My dear friends, let that peace that Jesus bring us be something that moves you, strengthens you, consoles you, and fill you always with Easter joy. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sin of the world, world. have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Grant us peace. Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who come to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but he say the word, and my soul will be healed. We make our spiritual communion. Jesus, really present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Since I cannot receive you under the sacramental veil, I beseech you with a heart full of love and longing to come spiritually into my soul through the immaculate heart of your most holy mother and to abide with me, you in me and I in you in time and in eternity. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining me today in this Mass. We salute our Blessed Lady with the Regina Cheni. Queen of Heaven, rejoice, alleluia, for he who were worthy to bear, alleluia, has risen as he said, alleluia, pray for us, Lord, alleluia. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.